हेलो एवरीबाडी वेलकम बैक टू येट अनादर वीडियो ऑफ फिकर डॉट डॉट कॉम नाउ फिकर डॉट फ्राम स्टडीज सो टूडे इज अ बिट ऑफ अ डिफरेंट वीडियो नॉट एग्जैक्टली स्टार्टिंग अ चैप्टर बट still a fun video so in the last video as you all know we did chapter number 2 tissues in biology of the same textbook of course and we studied about plant and animal tissues so below that you all were asking for a video of the parts of a cell their main characteristics and chief functions so here i am making a video of that before that the discovery of the cell everything i am not doing all of that because you all requested for the parts of the cell only and also in this particular textbook the parts of the cell is the most important thing the discovery of the cell is something that you can just go through and you will understand that but the parts of the cell you may see many many new words that may confuse you so i'm back with that and without further ado let's get into it so before i actually go to the main two pages 12 and 13 let's first look at the table over here because the table has many new words and if everything is covered in this table i may not touch 12 and th- the page number 12 and 13 but if everything is not covered of course i will so first of all let's start with this table over here because this table has a lot of information and it just talks about a lot of things in general of course so starting off let's start with the plasma membrane which is also called as the cell membrane so while we do this let's let's play god right now all of you must be wondering what is this game god well it's not a game let's become god and basically construct a cell so let's start off with the plasma membrane which is also called as the cell membrane okay so the first thing we're starting off with the plasma membrane or also called as a cell membrane and we're making an an outer uh, layer right and plasma membrane also called as cell membrane is the outermost in animal cells it lies next to the cell wall in plant cells so as for the animal cells it's the outermost why you will get to know why so let's keep this question at the back of our mind and the second one it lies next to the cell wall in the plant cells so in the in cell in plant cell cell wall is the outermost and going back to the first question why is it the outermost in the animal cells well because as for plant cells plant cells have cell walls right uh, which hold which gives them a rigid structure but in the case of animal cells animal cells are very free and that's why they are able to do we basically able to move do gymnastics do contortion tricks do all of that because we do not have a rigid structure in our body called the what the cell wall we have a very smooth a very elastic like structure called the cell membrane so it is the outermost in animal cells uh, it lies next to the cell wall in the plant cells it is a very thin flexible living membrane right very thin a very very flexible one that i just said right you can either say it is elastic like or it is very thin and flexible it is a living membrane so underline that it's, it is also given in bold in your textbook then it possesses fine pores pores sorry it is semi permeable so what do you mean by semi permeable now some Mm, organelles are permeable fully freely permeable this means that it allows each and every substance to come in and go out but as for the cell membrane it does not allow each and every substance to go in and come out so it's almost like the watchman out of your building or your apartment complex right it is the watchman that stands over there and only allows certain people to come in and but not all the uh, people to come in and out right and the last and final point would be that it is made up of lipo proteins now some chief functions are it separates contents of the cell from its surrounding of course it does because it is semi permeable also right it regulates the entry of certain solutes and ions and it maintains the shape of the cell in animal cells only because in plant cells the cell wall is the one that maintains the shape and gives the rigidity that the plants need but in animal cells uh, the since the cell wall is not there of course it 
maintains the shape of the cell. Now, when I say, uh, go back to the fourth point that possesses fine pores. Now, these fine pores allow substances to come in and go out. But again, since it's semi-permeable, only certain, only certain substances to come in and go out of the cell. And again, it is made up of lipoproteins, right? So let's rub all of this and let's only keep the cell membrane as of now. All right, so this is your cell membrane. And also since there are some substances that are there in the plant cell but are not there in the animal cell, what I will be doing is I'll make the plant cell itself so that you can see each and every uh, organelle, right? So we're done with the plasma membrane. Put a tick mark next to it. I'll do that too. All right, so let's finish this plant cell. Okay, I cannot. I'll try making it, but it'll come in the way of our game of God. So you all just take your textbook and mark and put a tick mark on your textbook. We are done with the plasma membrane. I hope you all understood that, right? Moving on with the cell wall. So cell wall is only in plant cells, as I said before. It is the outermost in plant cells. It's a very rigid structure and the outermost in plant cells. This. Fine. Right? It is a non-living rigid layer surrounding, uh, surrounding the plasma membrane. So normally whatever we have learnt until now, the most rigid structures of all are almost always non-living. Like in the tissues chapter, right? The sclerenchyma. It was made with the deposition of lignin. And it was also non-living. Right? So that is what we're talking about. So cell wall is also non-living. Then it is freely permeable as in it allows each and every substance to come in and go out. So let's take this whole thing like a building. The cell wall is the building, the building gate that you go in, but then you come, you come across a watchman. That is the plasma membrane that only allows certain substances to come in and go out. Then it is mainly composed of cellulose. So cellulose is a substance and it is mainly composed of cellulose and cellulose cellulose is also a dead uh, cell so if when if if you get a give reason question saying that why is the cell wall uh, dead well because it is mainly composed of cellulose and cellulose is a non living substance right then the chief functions of the cell wall are it gives rigidity and shape to the plant cell all right, only to the plant cell because it is only present in the plant cell. But as of animal cells, the plasma membrane gives uh, gives the shape. Then it allows substances and solution to enter and leave the cell without any hindrance, and it provides protection to the cell because it is so rigid. It gives the rigidity that the plant needs, and it also allows uh, any substance, basically in solution form, to come in and go out of the cell. All right, so let's fill this up with this green substance this is the whole cell wall the rigid cell wall all right because we've got to decorate our plant cell come on right so we'll also decorate it a bit and i'll see you guys after i finish this and i'm done we're back it almost looks like a christmas tree but okay fine never mind <laughs> okay so again let's put a tick mark on our cell wall that is only present in plant cells third one the cytoplasm so the cytoplasm you know all the parts together in the plasma membrane excluding the nucleus contains a mixture of water and soluble in uh, inorganic and organic compounds and various organelles so cytoplasm is almost like a semi liquid like substance semi sorry tra semi transparent substance it is completely made up of liquid and it is almost you cannot see it so if I'm drawing, if I'm covering this whole thing with a white thing, this is your cytoplasm. It covers almost every organelle and it is throughout, uh, it is basically present throughout the cell. Except the nucleus, but it is made up of a structure or a mixture of water in, or in organic compounds and organic compounds. Now chief function is different organelles contained in it perform different functions because of course if it's present all over the cell of course all the functions will happen in it itself. Right? All metabolic activities occur in it and medium for initial steps of respiration pr production of uh, pyruvic acid and anaerobic respiration. So these 
are the new words that I was talking about. So what do you mean by this third point? Let's break this third point down over here and let's see what your textbook is trying to say to you, all right? Medium for initial steps of respiration, production of pyruvic acid. Basically, this means that the cytoplasm that is there, not only does it uh, perform, you know, metabolic activities and allows other plants or uh, plant organelles, plant cell organelles to perform activities in it, it is also medium for initial steps of respiration. So it has a medium state for the initial steps of respiration and where does the respiration happen yes in the mitochondria and though it basically also produces pi what is it called pi ruvic sorry ruvic acid okay it produces pyruvic acid and anaerobic sorry <laughs> it's a little hard to pronounce but uh, i'll just pronounce it how i want right anaerobic respiration all right so with the production of pyruvic acid and for anaerobic respiration so it's medium for the initial steps of that hope you all understood this part if you have any doubts post it in the comment section below i'll be more than happy to solve them perfect so let's put a tick mark on our cytoplasm as well while I rub all of this, I'll give you five seconds to do so. All right. And we are back. Fourth one. Endoplasmic reticulum, also known as the ER. So it's an irregular network of double membrane tubules. It is continuous with the plasma membrane on the outside and the nuclear membrane on the inside. So of course, the endoplasmic reticulum, it has an irregular network of double membraned tubules. Now, what do, what do I mean when I say double membrane? That means double membrane, like this. Double membrane, double membrane. So, there are double membrane uh, parts and tubules. It is, a, it is continuous with the plasma membrane on the outside and the nuclear membrane on the inside. So, it is, it's an irregular network. So, it starts with the plasma membrane being on the outside, right, with the plasma membrane here that is the plasma membrane till the nuclear membrane so double membrane all of this is over here or oh, let me draw a better one all right right so from the plasma membrane till the uh, what do you say what is it called the nuclear membrane i'm trying my best i know it doesn't really look like a cell but hang in there with me all right now some chief functions are to supportive it provides a supportive um, framework for the cells and the synthesis and transport for of proteins and fats so synthesis of and transport of proteins this point i'll come back to when we read about the ribosomes all right so put a tick mark on that as well then the fifth one the mitochondria the energy and the powerhouse of the cell it is it is of various shapes but usually a sausage like shape it almost looks like a bacteria right so if i had to draw one i would i would almost say it looks like sausage like and inside you have your ketchup it almost looks like this you know this is your mitochondria and it is again double walled its inner cell thrown into folds so if you've ever seen a mitochondria you would see that it its inner side something it looks looks something like this right it, they're just inner folds something like this which doesn't only look like ketchup but it actually folds they're double walled inner folds called cristae these folds also have a name and they have their own dna containing several genes in fact let me tell you a very interesting fact over here when our life starts as a cell right when our life starts as a cell the chromosome not chromosome exactly but the dna in the mitochondria the mother the the mother that uh, has the DNA in her mitochondria is actually transported to the baby, baby, the same one, the same DNA. The father does not contribute in this. So we actually have same DNA that is present in our mitochondria as our mom, moms. And uh, scientists have used this method to actually 
find many ancestors so if any poor boy just comes up to me and says hey my ancestor was shah jahan <laughs> i would definitely not uh, believe him but if he actually shows me a dna proof he can prove that because maybe his ancestors his mothers 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 all of them have the same dna the mitochondria that we say right the same dna in the mitochondria and that's how that's how you can find your ancestors from 2000 years ago 3000 years ago it's a pretty expensive process but you can do that all right then they also contain their own ribosomes that's ribosomes are the factories of synthesis the proteins the factories of synthesis proteins protein synthesis it regulates cell functions if removed the cell dies of course because it's it's almost like our body if you don't if you don't have oxygen if you're not able to undergo the process of respiration in our body we'll die and so will the cell die because mitochondria is the site of site where the cell respiration takes place it also contains chromosomes bearers of genes that control hereditary characters as i just said in simple words but yeah all right again put a tick mark on your mitochondria and now let's move on to the sixth cell organelle which which is and the golgi apparatus so i won't go to the next page because we're drawing our diagram over here but i will read out what is given on the next page golgi apparatus in animal cells are called as di cortisomes in plant cells so golgi apparatus it is called golgi apparatus in animal cells but it has a different name in plant cells now it's stacks of it it has stacks of flattened membrane sacs it consists of tubules and vesicles and vacuoles its a cell function is for the synthesis and the secretion of enzymes hormones formation of uh, acrosome of sperm only in animals and human beings so sperms of course when we talk about sperms it's found in uh, male animal cells or human beings whatever because we are also animals right so it's only found in male animal beings or animal cells or whatever and uh, the golgi apparatus is basically called as a transport system of the cell it it's almost like the post office of the cell it packages everything and then sends it off to other cell organelles so how does a golgi apparatus how does a golgi apparatus look like it looks like it looks something like this 1 2 3 okay something like this 1 2 3 4 5 and 5 hey i'm trying my best look okay, all right <laughs> but uh, i guess this is this is the best i can get or i can achieve while drawing online <laughs> let's put a tick mark on golgi apparatus as well and now let's move on to the seventh part that's the ribosomes so ribosomes are small granules either scattered in the cytoplasm or attached on to the outside of the endoplasmic reticulum single wall dense spherical bodies composed mainly of rna so remember when i said that i'll come back to the second point of the endoplasmic reticulum that said synthesis and transport of proteins and fats now this is because ribosomes can either be like small spots that are scattered everywhere around the cell so 1 2 3 4 5 6 or they can be present on top of the endoplasmic reticulum so endoplasmic reticulum as we all know it it, it, it provides a supportive uh, framework so what happens is the endoplasmic reticulum and the ribosomes are almost is is, is almost like a factory this is your endoplasmic reticulum all right and this are your ribosomes just present on top of them so the ribosomes are almost like factory workers and the endoplasmic reticulum is like the factory and the materials so what happens is listen to me very carefully the ribosomes are the synthesis the protein synthesis the factories of proteins uh, protein synthesis right it is uh, th that is where uh, the proteins are formed and that is how the cell gets proteins so the ribosomes over here give away the proteins through the endoplasmic reticulum and from here they go to the golgi apparatus that's the post office of the cell and then it goes through all the cell organelles organelles so it also that's why it it provides that, that, that's what the second point says synthesis and transport of proteins and fat so this is where the 
our ribosomes release their proteins and then it goes to the golgi body and from the golgi body or the golgi apparatus to all the other parts of the cell or the all or or all the other organelles of the cell right so i hope you all understood this now one more thing the ribosomes when it is present on top of the what do you say the endoplasmic reticulum it is called the rough endoplasmic reticulum and without uh, without ribosomes attached to the endoplasmic reticulum the endoplasmic reticulum is called as the smooth endoplasmic reticulum so the rough er and the smooth er rough er with the ribosomes smooth er without the ribosomes all right now one chief function of the ribosomes as we have read protein synthesis so let's rub all of this off i can't just clear my white white robe or it's my masterpiece will get uh, cancelled off no i'm totally joking this is not a masterpiece but never mind <laughs> moving on to the eighth one lysosomes so lysosomes are membranous sacs budded off from golgi bodies they contain four, 40 different types of enzymes and uh, their chief functions are so before we go to the chief fun chief functions lysosomes are they look like this little blob just this little blob that is just present in the cell just this little blob all right with the little dots in in and out so and the lys lysosomes are also called as the suicide bags of the cell now why do they call it that well because its main chief function is for intercellular di digestion it destroys foreign substances when the cell is older injured these rapidly destroy organelles hence called the suicide bags and they digest cartilages du during formation of bone so what happens is apart from if it having 40 different types of enzymes membrane sacs why are they called as a suicide bags so what happens is let's say this is a uh, lys lysosome i've just taken this out from here and some viruses come and attack the lysosome so they're coming and attacking the lysosome so what ha happens is both of them dissolve and they form another substance called as the phagosome now this phagosome dissolves and other uh, lysosomes that are good and well functioning they dissolve such uh, you can say they dissolve the phagosome and then our the cell continues to work as it is so of course it destroys foreign substances and not only viruses let's say if the mitochondria one of the mitochondria it's injured or injured non mitochondria let's take um, some other uh, some other cell organelle let's take the golgi apparatus okay so the golgi apparatus is old and it's injured so what the lysosome does it does it basically dissolves the golgi apparatus and dissolves it self also so it dissolves its own cell organelles in its own cell and that's why they are called as suicide bags they also digest cartilages during the formation of bones and that's why all of this is clear now right that's why they are called as a suicide bags so let's put a tick on lysosomes as well the next one the ninth one centrosomes so centrosomes are, are is one cell organelle that is only present in animal cell till now we've only we've seen uh, organelles that are present only in plant cell but not one until now in animal cell so centrosome is something that is only present in animal cells that's us so a centrosome is a region surrounding the centrioles located near cell contains one or two centrioles centrioles are surrounded by radiating microtubules to form a star that's the aster during cell division so another new word that we come across right so a region surrounding the centrioles located near the nucleus so it surrounds the centrioles so if i'm saying these are little centrioles they surround the centrioles near the nucleus so this is the nucleus over here fine and it's near the nucleus they contain one or two centrioles because they surround them right and centrioles are surrounded by radiating microtubules to form a star that is called the asters so if i'm saying this is your uh, centrioles there two they're they're basically uh, surrounded by microtubules and they form a star so all of these are microtubules 
and they form a star and these this star as a whole is called as an aster it is called as an aster during cell division it initiates and regulates cell division and it forms spindle fibers with the help of asters let's put it in centrosomes as well then we have plastids plant cells only there are several kinds most common ones are chloroplasts containing the green pigment chlorophyll uh, double membrane uh, matrix containing dna this like structure is called the thylakoids containing chlorophyll then the cell functions are it has three plastids are actually divided into three parts chromoplasts chloroplasts and leucoplasts so that was about plastids then we have the nucleus the nucleus is almost like the brain of the cell it basically controls each and everything of the cell oh wait before that let's draw a little plastid i'm running out of space honestly but okay <laughs> so that's a little plastid fine now let's also put a tick on plastid before we start with nucleus right done so nucleus is the largest cell organ mostly spherical and dense nuclear membrane with pores to allow substances to enter and leave the cell it contains a network of thread like structures called chromatin fibers which contain the dna now it regulates the cell functions if removed the cell dies it contains chromosomes of genes that hold hereditary characters so what the nucleus is basically the largest cell organ and of all right it's almost like the brain of the cell as i said it's mostly spherical and dense so how does the nucleus nucleus look if i had to tell you okay how does the nucleus look the nucleus almost looks like spherical and dense as your textbook also says the nuclear membrane with pores allows substances to leave and enter the cell so the nuclear membrane also has few pores here and there okay which allows substances to enter and leave the cell because if the nucleus supposed to make all the decisions substances will keep entering and going out of the cell so this is where the pores come in handy then the nuclear membrane with pores okay fine and it contains network of thread like structures called the chromatin fibers which contain the dna and the dna has everything written on it it has everything blue printed and by that the nucleus makes decision of how the cell is supposed to look how it is supposed to perform etc it also regulates the cell functions uh, of course if it's removed the cell dies it contains chromosomes and the chromosomes as i said it bears the hereditary characters then the nucleolus is one or more round structures that are present inside the nucleus all right it is uh, it produces ribosomes it participates in the protein synthesis by forming uh, the by forming and storing rna it dictates ribosomes to synthesis protein so it's almost like the boss or the manager of the ribosomes fine then the 13th one before that underline oh no sorry tick your nucleus and nucleolus 13th one chromatin fibers so chromatin fibers is the network in resting stage of the nucleolus condenses into chromosomes during cell division it is made up of dna threads so the chromatin fibers is present inside the chromosomes fine and inside the chromosomes sorry and the nucleolus sorry let me just frame this properly the nucleus contains the chromosomes inside the chromosomes you have the chromatin fibers inside the chromatin fibers you have the dna where everything is blue printed it is made up of dna threads that's why it looks something like this you know this 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 i can't really explain this and this uh, structure or this diagram anyway does not look good so i'll just delete all of this and i'll show you how it looks all right so you see this structure over here this this is what the dna look like looks like their dna threads every single where and that's what the chromatin fibers contain the chromosomes carry uh, hereditary information of the genes from parents to offsprings all right moving on to the next page we talk about the vacuoles and the granules it's very easy extremely easy basically the vacuoles they are clear, clear spaces with water or other substances in solution plant cells have larger vacuoles while the animal cells have fewer and smaller ones covered by a covering called the tonoplast underline that then it is storage of water it gives turgidity to the cell it contains pigments the anthocyanins etc give a tick mark on that then you have granules granules are just small part particles here and there they store starch and they also serve as the food 
for the cell so here you go here are all your cell organelles i hope you all understood i think most of the things or most of the uh, information was covered so we won't go through the page we won't go through page number 12 and 13 because almost most of everything was covered but if you do want me to go through it post it in the comment section below i'll be more than happy to go through it and go through it with you in fact hope you all understood this complete video if you have any doubts post it in the comment section once again like share subscribe to fickernot.com now fickernot from studies i hope all these videos help you and i'll see you guys next time bye